Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. This is the last video and it can also be viewed by itself on the interoperability about payments. In the last videos, uh, there's, a, you know, there's a playlist here. You should be able to see it here. Uh, I talked about the interoperability in payments, how broken you know, the, the system is. We talked about wallets and how you know, payments among wallet systems is broken or the stored value is broken. The interoperability among stored value systems is broken. And I want to show you how it is actually solved. So I have you know, my typical wallets and my uh, masking tape and I did something. So these are two different payment ecosystems. One is we will call it X and one we will call Z. This could be Starbucks, this could be McDonald's, this could be Turkish Airlines, this could be Lufthansa, this could be, I don't know, PayPal, this could be, you know, M-Pesa, whatever it is. These are two completely disparate payment systems. And we have here Bob and we have Jane and, you know, Jane needs to receive 50, uh, let's say dollars or whatever currency it is from Bob. How will that work? They remember, they're completely different systems, completely different ecosystems. And, you know, Bob needs to pay Jane. So the one way that this works is if as an operator, as a program manager, we bring in, let's say, me. So I am obviously also part of the same ecosystem. We have X, we have X. And now we can, this is a collection account and a disbursement account. This is Bob's account, this is someone else's account, this is someone else's account, and this is the program manager's account. So let's say if this was, I don't know, um, let's say this is uh, Starbucks. So this is Bob's Starbucks account, and I, as a program manager, will also open an account in Starbucks. And that would be my collection and my payout or my disbursement account. I can receive money into this account and I can send money out. So I need to take 50 from Bob in order to pay Jane. So let's just do that. So, you know, I put some, uh, some money in it and we have 50 and we've taken out from Bob's account and we will now put it into this over here. And this is my collection and disbursement account. So we put 50 over here. Well, voila, done. So now Bob is less 50 and my account has more 50. As a program manager, as a program manager, I also happen to have an account in over here. And this is where Jane is. And let's say this is, uh, I don't know, some gaming uh, you know, uh, platform in uh, uh, Europe where everyone, let's say this is uh, you know, Second Life. So Jane wants $50 in Second Life. Well, guess what? In Second Life, as a program manager, I also have an account. I also have a collection and disbursement account in Second Life. So now I have an account in Starbucks, I have an account in here, I have an account in all the other ecosystems. I know I have received money from Bob in my Starbucks account. So can I give Jane? Because I've already received the money from Bob. Yes, I can give Jane. So I open my wallet and I take 50 out. And what do I do? I open, send it to Jane. And now Jane has just received money from my collection account. Well, I have to get this right from here. So you see how easy it was to look at my collection accounts in various disparate systems and you know push money. Because I had a collection and a disbursement account here, because I had a collection and a disbursement account here, I'm able to traverse money. I can collect money from here to here and pay money from here to here. And I can do the reverse. I can have Jane pay me and I can pay out to Bob because I have a collection account in both the institutions or both the entities or both the stored value systems. What, I, what you need to be cognizant of is how do I settle amongst myself? Well, remember, every system that, I ha that we talked about over here has to have some sort of a rails of uploading value and downloading value. And they may not be the same. One could be in Europe for, Euro you know, for, for euros. One could be in, in Nigeria with Nairas. One could be in Singapore for Singapore dollars. But at the end of the day, if I, as a program manager, have access to all of them and I convert them back onto the fiat rails, then I can settle with my system. If I have money sitting in my, let's say, we talked about the Starbucks account in dollars, and then we have money sitting in Linden Life in, let's say, euros. Now the dollars and euros I can use an FX broker and I can, and or Swift network, and I can settle amongst ourselves. If there's too much money over here and I need to move it here, I can do so. If there's too much money here and I need to move it here, I can do so. It's all possible 
because of the fact that you are able to have collection and disbursement accounts. When you have a collection and a disbursement account in all these disparate ecosystems, that is when you are truly stitching the payment fabric. That is when you're truly making a difference. Now, it may not make sense to, you know, sort of uh, stitch five payment systems in Turkey or five in, you know, uh, Ghana or Tanzania or in Bangladesh or in Vietnam or in Chile, but five and five and 10 and 15 and 20, then you start stitching more and more. And one day you are big, too big to be ignored. One day you are too important not to have a seat at the table. One day you will, you will be just that, you know, the super API. And I talked about the super API. I'll do a, a link over here as to what a super API is. And then just by accessing your super API, I can have access to all these disparate payment systems and natively, perhaps even in real time, transfer value. This is the real challenge and people and folks who are building these kind of systems for settlement. Sorry, I keep going back to the wallets, but it's just, it's just so much fun, you know, showing it how people money, how money can be moved between users and the program manager accounts where they have collection and disbursement accounts. And then the users can seamlessly get money in, in and out. That is where the next wave of commerce is going to be. That's where the next wave of payments is going to be. And we keep saying, well, you know, I think we've, we've, we've reached a plateau. Well, we never reached a plateau. The digital camera came out. Did we reach a plateau? No. When, the, when it came out in the mobile phone, you said, oh, we've reached a digital plateau. No. Now we're going into multi, you know, uh, 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 megapixel cameras. Now VR is coming out. Just when we think the plateau has reached, something else comes out. So I think in the payments world, it's the same thing. When we start stitching these disparate payment systems, I think the use cases will come out like we've never seen before. This is literally, in many ways, the iPhone arena, the Android arena, the version 2.0 coming in, the version 3.0, the smartphones coming in. And then we go from the standard iPhone, imagine what an iPhone 5 did or 6 or 7 did, the standard Android and what the latest versions of Androids do. I think the payments are gonna go through the same thing. The use cases are fantastic and it's very, very exciting time to be in this world. I hope I was able to answer this. If you have any questions or comments, there's a contact form in the description below. Please fill it out, I'd be happy to answer. If you are building a payment system that is interoperable, if you uh, would like to make an announcement, if you would like to get interviewed, or if you would like to showcase or give us some thoughts, please use that contact form. I'd be happy to get in touch with you. Faisal Khan, signing off till next time. Have a good one, stay safe.